Question 1. Which navigation aid provides distance and direction information from a ground-based station to an aircraft, a VOR, B DME, C GPS, D NDB? Correct answer. B DME, distance measuring equipment. Explanation. DME is a navigation aid that provides accurate distance information between the aircraft and the ground-based station, enhancing situational awareness and navigation accuracy. It uses paired ground-based and airborne equipment to calculate the slant range distance. VORA provides azimuth direction information. GPS C provides precise position information using satellites and NDB D provides non-directional relative bearing information. Understanding these aids is crucial for air traffic controllers to assist pilots in navigating safely through airspace utilizing appropriate equipment based on operational requirements. Question 2. An air traffic controller needs to vector an aircraft for an ILS instrument landing system approach. Which primary navigation aid provides precise azimuth guidance to align the aircraft with the runway centerline during the final approach phase AVOR? BGPS, CILS, DDME. Correct answer CILS Instrument Landing System. Explanation The ILS provides precision approach guidance to aircraft by emitting both glide path and localizer signals, ensuring accurate alignment with the runway center line and descent path. This aids pilots in making precise approaches and landings, especially during low visibility conditions. VORA provides azimuth information but is not as precise for approach guidance as the ILS. GPS B provides position information rather than approach guidance, and DME D measures distance rather than providing azimuth guidance. Understanding these navigation aids is essential for controllers to effectively assist pilots in safely navigating and landing at airports. Question 3. Mr. Carter, an air traffic controller, notices conflicting flight paths between two aircraft in controlled airspace. Both aircraft are flying at the same altitude and heading towards each other. What immediate action should Mr. Carter take? A. Instruct one aircraft to descend immediately to a lower altitude. B. Issue a traffic advisory to both aircraft to monitor their responses. C. Initiate the turn maneuver for one aircraft to avoid the collision course. D. Instruct both aircraft to maintain current altitude and head in. Correct answer. C. Initiate a turn maneuver for one aircraft to avoid the collision course. When two aircraft are on a potential collision course, controllers must take immediate action to ensure separation. The correct response is to initiate a turn maneuver for one of the aircraft to alter its flight path and avoid the conflict. This action aligns with the air traffic control procedures FAR Order 7110.65 that prioritize collision avoidance through proactive measures such as vectoring or altitude adjustments. Verbal traffic advisories, option B, may not be sufficient if aircraft are on a collision course and maintaining current positions, option D, would not resolve the immediate threat. Effective decision making and situational awareness are crucial for controllers to manage airspace safely and prevent mid air collisions. Question 4 In a radar environment which Chul aids air traffic controllers in visualizing and managing aircraft positions and movements in real time, A. ARTS Automated Radar Terminal System, B. ME TAR Meteorological Aerodrome Report, C. TAF Terminal Aerodrome Forecast, D-N-O-T-A-M, Notice to Airmen. Correct answer, AARTS, Automated Radar Terminal System. Explanation, ARTS is an automated system used by air traffic controllers to display radar-derived aircraft positions and flight data, facilitating real-time monitoring and management of aircraft within controlled airspace. ARTS enhances spatial reasoning by providing controllers with visual representations of aircraft positions, headings, and altitude information, aiding in the safe and efficient sequencing of arrivals and departures. ME, TAR, B, and TAF 
C, provide weather information, what N-O-T-A-M-S-D, notify pilots of important operational information but do not aid in aircraft position visualization. Understanding radar systems like ARTS is critical for controllers to maintain situational awareness and ensure effective airspace management. Question 5. During a severe thunderstorm, radar coverage is disrupted in certain sectors of an ARTCC air route traffic control center. What alternative methods can air traffic controllers use to maintain separation and manage aircraft in affected areas? A. Increase lateral separation between aircraft. B. Reduce the number of aircraft in affected sectors. C. Rely solely on pilot reported positions. D. Implement non-radar separation procedures. Correct answer. D. Implement non-radar separation procedures. Explanation. During radar outages caused by severe weather or technical issues, controllers rely on non-radar separation procedures outlined in FAA Order 7110.65. These procedures include using procedural separation based on known positions, time intervals, and altitude differences to maintain safe separation between aircraft. Options A and B may be temporary measures but do not directly address the need for separation when radar is unavailable. Option C is not sufficient for maintaining safe separation under IFR conditions. Understanding non-radar procedures is critical for controllers to manage airspace safely during radar disruptions. Question 6. Which navigation aid provides distance and direction information simultaneously to aircraft? A. VOR. B. DMA. C. GPS. D. A. D. F. Correct answer, a VOR, VHF, an unidirectional range. Uh, explanation, VOR provides azimuth information direction to aircraft relative to the VOR station and distance information through DME. Distance measuring equipment when paired with a DME, co-located at the same site. This combination allows pilots to navigate accurately by receiving both directional guidance and distance information from a single ground-based station. GPS C provides precise position information using satellites but does not provide azimuth guidance from a specific ground based station. ADF D provides non directional relative bearing information and does not give precise distance measurements. Understanding VORMI systems is essential for controllers to assist pilots in navigating through airspace efficiently and safely. Question 7. Mr. Patel, an air traffic controller, is managing several aircraft during a severe weather event when communication is lost with one aircraft. Radar coverage is also intermittent due to the storm. What immediate action should Mr. Patel take? A. Initiate search and rescue procedures. B. Clear the aircraft away from the last known position of the lost aircraft. C. Attempt to re-establish communication with the lost aircraft using alternate frequencies. D. Notify Jason AT, C. Facilities and Coordinate Emergency Response Efforts. Correct answer. C. Attempt to re-establish communication with the lost aircraft using alternate frequencies. Explanation. In scenarios where communication is lost with an aircraft during severe weather, controllers should attempt to re-establish contact using alternate frequencies or methods such as SE, LCAL Selective Calling System, if available. This action aims to regain communication and ascertain the aircraft's current position and intentions. Initiating search and rescue, option A, and coordinating emergency responses, option D, may follow, but the immediate priority is to restore communication to ensure the safety and continuity of aircraft operations. This decision reflects the controller's responsibility to maintain situational awareness and take decisive actions under challenging circumstances. Question 8. An air traffic controller is handling multiple aircraft in a high traffic sector. Which cognitive skill is most critical for effectively managing and sequencing aircraft movements in this scenario? A. Spatial orientation. B. Decision making. C. Multitasking. D. Communication. Correct answer. C. Multitasking. Explanation. In high traffic sectors, controllers must multitask efficiently to manage multiple aircraft. 
monitor radar displays, issue clearances, and maintain situational awareness. Multitasking involves simultaneously processing and prioritizing multiple tasks, ensuring safe and orderly flow of air traffic within assigned airspace. This cognitive skill is essential for controllers to handle dynamic and complex operational environments effectively, minimizing delays and maintaining airspace efficiency. Spatial orientation, a decision making, beat, and communication. D are also critical skills, but may not require the same level of simultaneous task management as multitasking in high traffic scenarios. Question 9. What ethical principle is most relevant for air traffic controllers in maintaining confidentiality and privacy of communications with pilots? A. Integrity. B. Impartiality. C. Accountability. D. Confidentiality. Correct answer. D. Confidentiality. A an explanation. Confidentiality is a fundamental ethical principle that requires controllers to safeguard sensitive information exchanged with pilots and other aviation personnel during communications. Controllers must ensure that information related to flight operations, aircraft positions, and pilot intentions remains confidential and is not disclosed to unauthorized parties. Upholding confidentiality builds trust, enhances operational security, and supports effective communication protocols in air traffic control environments. Integrity A. Impartiality B. And accountability C. Are also important ethical principles, but are not specifically focused on maintaining confidentiality in communications. Question 10. During peak traffic periods, how can air traffic controllers effectively manage workload and prioritize tasks? A. Delegate tasks to assistant controllers. B. Increase separation standards between aircraft. C. Employ automated conflict resolution tools. D. Utilize time management techniques. Correct answer. D. Utilize time management techniques. Explanation. During peak traffic periods, controllers face increased workload and operational demands requiring effective time management strategies to prioritize tasks and maintain airspace efficiency. Techniques such as prioritizing critical actions, scheduling breaks for mental refreshment, and managing communication flow help controllers manage workload effectively without compromising safety. While delegation A, increased separation, B, and automated tools, C, may assist in workload management. Utilizing time management techniques enables controllers to maintain situational awareness, make informed decisions, and ensure safe and efficient air traffic operations. Question 11. Innes. Garcia, an air traffic controller, encounters an unexpected loss of radar coverage in her sector due to technical failure. How should Imis Garcia manage traffic in her sector until radar service is restored? A. Clear aircraft to fly at their filed flight levels until radar service resumes. B. Implement non-radar separation procedures outlined in FAA Order 7110.65. C. Instruct aircraft to hold at their current positions until radar service resumes. D. Advise aircraft to proceed visually and report positions at regular intervals. Correct answer. B. Implement non-radar separation procedures outlined in FAA Order 7110.65. Explanation. During a loss of radar coverage, controllers must implement non-radar separation procedures to ensure safe separation between aircraft. These procedures, as outlined in FAA Order 7110.65, include using positional reports, time intervals, and altitude assignments to maintain separation based on known positions. Option A does not provide active separation management, while options C and D may temporarily manage traffic but do not align with established procedures for maintaining safe separation during radar outage. Understanding non-radar procedures is essential for controllers to manage airspace effectively and ensure continued operational safety during technical disruptions. Question 12. Which ethical principle guides air traffic controllers to treat all aircraft and pilots fairly and without bias? A. Integrity. B. Impartiality. C. Accountability. D. Professionalism. 
correct answer be impartiality uh, explanation impartiality is an ethical principle that requires air traffic controllers to treat all aircraft and pilots fairly and without bias regardless of their identity affiliation or circumstances controllers must maintain objectivity in decision making provide equitable services to all users of the airspace and adhere to established procedures and regulations uniformly impartiality fosters trust enhances operational safety and promotes a professional environment conducive to effective air traffic control services integrity a, accountability c and professionalism d are also important ethical principles but focus on different aspects of ethical conduct in aviation operations question 13 which navigation aid provides distance information based on time measurements rather than radio signals a vor B DME, C TACAN, D GPS. Correct answer, B DME, distance measuring equipment. Uh, explanation, DME, distance measuring equipment, provides accurate distance information between the aircraft and the ground station by measuring the time it takes for radio signals to travel between the aircraft and the ground station. It is commonly used in conjunction with VORA or ILS instrument landing system to provide precise navigation data, including distance measurements. Unlike VORA, which provides azimuth guidance, DME focuses solely on distance measurements. TACANC is similar to DME, but also provides azimuth information for military aircraft. GPSD uses satellite signals to determine precise position information rather than time based distance measurements. Question 14 MS Ramirez, an air traffic controller, observes an aircraft deviating from its assigned heading without clearance in controlled airspace. What immediate action should MS Ramirez take? A. Instruct the aircraft to resume its assigned heading immediately. B. Issue traffic advisories to nearby aircraft. C. Notify the pilot of the deviation and continue monitoring. D. Clear the aircraft away from the path of the deviating aircraft. Correct answer. A. Instruct the aircraft to resume its assigned heading immediately. Explanation. In controlled airspace, adherence to assigned headings and clearances is essential for maintaining safe separation and airspace management. MS Ramirez should promptly instruct the deviating aircraft to resume its assigned heading to prevent potential conflicts with other aircraft. Its action ensures adherence to established procedures outlined in FAA Order 7110.65 and enhances operational safety by maintaining separation standards. Options B and C may be considered after correcting the heading deviation while option D focuses on reactive measures rather than immediate corrective action. Question 15. Mr. Anderson, an air traffic controller, receives conflicting altitude reports from two aircraft on intersecting flight paths. How should Mr. Anderson resolve the altitude discrepancy to ensure safe separation? A. Instruct both aircraft to maintain their current altitudes until the discrepancy is resolved. B. Issue immediate vectoring instructions to alter aircraft courses away from each other. C. Direct one aircraft to climb and the other to descend to achieve vertical separation. D. Implement a traffic advisory and instruct both aircraft to deviate from their flight paths. Correct answer. C. Direct one aircraft to climb and the other to descend to achieve vertical separation. Explanation. When faced with conflicting altitude reports, controllers should immediately take action to establish vertical separation between aircraft to ensure safety. Directing one aircraft to climb and the other to descend option C effectively resolves the altitude discrepancy and maintains required separation standards. This action aligns with procedural requirements outlined in FAA Order 7110.65 and enhances situational awareness by mitigating potential conflicts. Options A, B and D do not provide adequate separation measures and may not effectively resolve the altitude discrepancy in accordance with airspace regulations. Question 16. According to FAA regulations, what ethical principle guides air traffic controllers to maintain confidentiality and protect sensitive information? A. Transparency. 
B confidentiality, C accountability, D professionalism. Correct answer, B confidentiality. Uh, explanation, confidentiality is an ethical principle that requires air traffic controllers to protect sensitive information obtained during the course of their duties, including aircraft positions, flight plans, and communications with pilots. Controllers must adhere to strict confidentiality protocols outlined in FAA Order 7210.3, ensuring that privileged information is not disclosed to unauthorized individuals or entities. Upholding confidentiality promotes trust among airspace users, enhances operational security, and supports effective decision making in air traffic control operations. Transparency A accountability c and professionalism d are also important ethical principles but focus on different aspects of ethical conduct in aviation operations question 17 mr davis an air traffic controller notices deteriorating weather conditions at an airport with approaching aircraft what action should mr davis take to manage traffic safely a instruct aircraft to expedite their approaches and land as soon as possible B. Issue holding instructions to aircraft until weather conditions improve. C. Provide weather updates to pilots and recommend alternate airports. D. Implement increased separation standards for arriving aircraft. Correct answer. C. Provide weather updates to pilots and recommend alternate airports. Explanation. When faced with deteriorating weather conditions affecting arriving aircraft, Mr. Davis should prioritise safety by providing timely weather updates to pilots and recommending alternate airports with better weather conditions. Option A may increase risk during adverse weather conditions, while option B temporarily manages traffic without addressing long-term safety concerns. Option D addresses separation standards but does not proactively manage weather-related risks. Providing accurate weather information and assisting pilots in making informed decisions aligns with controllers' responsibilities to ensure safe and efficient traffic flow during challenging operational conditions. Question 18. MS. Smith, an air traffic controller, experiences a sudden loss of communication with an aircraft in controlled airspace. What immediate action should MS? Smith take to ensure safety. A. Instruct other aircraft to maintain separation and monitor the lost communication aircraft. B. Issue an emergency squawk code to the lost communication aircraft. C. Implement non-radar separation procedures as outlined in FAA Order 7110.65. D. Clear airspace and divert traffic away from the lost communication aircraft. Correct answer, A. Instruct other aircraft to maintain separation and monitor the lost communication aircraft. Explanation, when communication is lost within aircraft in controlled airspace, controllers must prioritise safety by instructing other aircraft to maintain separation and monitor the last known position of the lost communication aircraft. Option B may be necessary if the aircraft has transponder capability, but it does not address separation management. Option C involves implementing non-radar procedures but may not apply if radar coverage is available. Option D is a reactive measure that may not ensure immediate safety. Maintaining separation and monitoring procedures align with established protocols for managing lost communication scenarios, ensuring continued safe operations in controlled airspace. Question 19. Mr. Thompson, an air traffic controller, encounters an aircraft experiencing a complete loss of electrical power in controlled airspace. What immediate actions should Mr. Thompson take to assist the pilot? A. Advise the pilot to squawk 7600 and follow lost communication procedures. B. Instruct nearby aircraft to maintain separation and monitor the situation. C. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport. D. Establish radio contact via alternative frequencies to relay instructions. Correct answer. B. Instruct nearby aircraft to maintain separation and monitor the situation. Explanation. When an aircraft experiences a complete loss of electrical power, including radio communication, controllers must prioritize safety by instructing nearby aircraft to maintain separation and monitor the situation. Option A, 
applies if the aircraft had transponder capability, but it may not be operational in a complete electrical failure. Option C is appropriate if radar guidance is available, but it assumes the aircraft can communicate. Option D may be attempted, but it is not guaranteed in a total electrical failure scenario. Maintaining separation and monitoring procedures are critical in managing emergencies to ensure continued safety in controlled airspace. Question 20 in this. Garcia, an air traffic controller, observes an aircraft deviating from its assigned altitude without clearance in controlled airspace. Why media action should in this? Garcia take to address the situation A. Issue immediate traffic advisories to nearby aircraft. B. Instruct the aircraft to resume its assigned altitude immediately. C. Notify the pilot of the deviation and continue monitoring. D. Initiate coordination with neighbouring ATC facilities. Correct answer. B. Instruct the aircraft to resume its assigned altitude immediately. Explanation. In cases where an aircraft deviates from its assigned altitude without clearance, controllers must take immediate action to restore separation and ensure safety. MS. Garcia should promptly instruct the aircraft to resume its assigned altitude to prevent potential conflicts with other traffic. This action aligns with established procedures outlined in FAA Order 7110.65 and helps maintain airspace integrity and safety. Options A, C and D may be considered after addressing the immediate altitude deviation to mitigate further risks and maintain operational control in controlled airspace. Question 20 on. Mr. Roberts, an air traffic controller, receives a report of an unauthorized drone operating near an airport's approach path. What immediate actions should Mr. Roberts take to manage the situation safely? A. Issue a notice to airmen, NOTAM, and notify local law enforcement. B. Instruct nearby aircraft to avoid the drone's reported location. C. Advise the drone operator to cease operations immediately. D. Implement airspace restrictions and notify affected pilots. Correct answer. D. Implement airspace restrictions and notify affected pilots. Explanation. When an unauthorized drone poses a potential hazard near an airport, controllers must take immediate action to ensure safety. Mr. Roberts should implement airspace restrictions around the reported drone location to prevent conflicts with arriving and departing aircraft. Additionally, notifying affected pilots and issuing relevant advisories, such as a notice to airmen, NOTEM, helps inform airspace users of the drone's presence and potential impact on flight operations. Options A, B and C may be considered in coordination with local authorities, but do not directly address airspace management and safety requirements. Question 22. Mr. Parker, an air traffic controller, receives conflicting position reports from two aircraft flying at the same altitude on intersecting flight paths. What immediate action should Mr. Parker take to resolve the conflict? A. Instruct one aircraft to climb and the other to descend to different altitudes. B. Issue radar vectors to both aircraft to establish visual separation. C. Instruct both aircraft to alter their courses to avoid each other. D. Verify position reports and issue revised instructions to one aircraft. Correct answer. D. Verify position reports and issue revised instructions to one aircraft. Explanation. When faced with conflicting position reports from aircraft, Mr. Parker should prioritize safety by verifying the accuracy of each aircraft's position and issuing revised instructions to resolve the conflict. This may involve adjusting altitudes, courses, or speeds to ensure adequate separation between aircraft. Option A may be appropriate if altitude separation can resolve the conflict, but verification of positions is crucial before issuing instructions. Options B and C involve immediate maneuvering but require precise coordination to avoid creating new conflicts or compromising safety. Verifying position reports and issuing revised instructions aligns with established procedures to maintain safe separation and operational control in controlled airspace. Question 23. Dennis. Rodriguez, an air traffic controller, receives a weather advisory indicating an approaching thunderstorm affecting the approach path to her airport. What immediate actions should MS? 
Rodriguez take to manage arriving traffic safely? A issue holding instructions to delay arrivals until the storm passes. B implement visual approaches for arriving aircraft to expedite landings. C divert incoming flights to alternative airports outside the storm's path. D. Apply reduced separation criteria for arriving aircraft to expedite landings. Correct answer. A issue holding instructions to delay arrivals until the storm passes. Uh, explanation. When facing an approaching thunderstorm affecting the approach path, MS Rodriguez should prioritize safety by issuing holding instructions to delay arrivals until the storm passes. Holding patterns allow controllers to manage traffic flow and maintain safe separation distances between aircraft, minimizing the risk of weather-related incidents during approach and landing operations. Options B and D involve expedited procedures that may compromise safety in adverse weather conditions. Option C may be considered for flights already airborne, but does not address managing arrivals affected by the storm. Implementing holding instructions aligns with established procedures to ensure safe and efficient air traffic management during inclement weather events. Question 24. Mr. Foster, an air traffic controller, observes an aircraft experiencing an engine failure in controlled airspace. What immediate actions should Mr. Foster take to assist the pilot? A. Issue emergency instructions and alert nearby aircraft of the situation. B. Clear the aircraft for an immediate emergency landing at the nearest suitable airport. C. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to a safe altitude and position. D. Initiate coordination with search and rescue operations for immediate assistance. Correct answer, A. Issue emergency instructions and alert nearby aircraft of the situation. Explanation, when an aircraft experiences an engine failure in controlled airspace, Mr. Foster should immediately issue emergency instructions to the pilot and alert nearby aircraft of the situation to prevent potential conflicts and ensure safety. Option B, may be considered if the aircraft can safely reach a nearby airport for emergency landing. Option C is appropriate to guide the aircraft to a safe altitude and position if radar guidance is available. Option D involves coordinating additional assistance but may not be immediately necessary if the situation is manageable within controlled airspace. Issuing emergency instructions and alerting nearby traffic helps mitigate risks and supports timely resolution of emergency situations in air traffic control operations. Question 25. MS. Lee, an air traffic controller, observes conflicting traffic on converging flight paths in her sector. What immediate actions should MS. Lee take to resolve the conflict? A. Instruct one aircraft to climb and the other to descend to maintain separation. B. Issue traffic advisories to both aircraft and monitor their responses. C. Provide radar vectors to establish lateral separation between the aircraft. D. Initiate coordination with adjacent sectors to route one of the aircraft. Correct answer. C. Provide radar vectors to establish lateral separation between the aircraft. Explanation. When facing conflicting traffic on converging flight paths MS, Lee should provide radar vectors to one or both aircraft to establish lateral separation and resolve the conflict. Radar vectors guide aircraft along specific headings to ensure safe separation distances are maintained. Option A may be appropriate if vertical separation can resolve the conflict, but radar vectors are typically used for lateral separation. Option B involves issuing advisories but may not directly resolve the conflict. Option D may be considered for rerouting but requires coordination and may not provide immediate resolution. Providing radar vectors aligns with established procedures to manage traffic safely and efficiently in controlled airspace. Question 26. Mr. Johnson, an air traffic controller, receives a report of a small aircraft experiencing radio communication failure while in controlled airspace. What immediate actions should Mr. Johnson take to manage the situation safely? A. Instruct nearby aircraft to maintain visual separation and avoid the affected aircraft. B. Issue radar vectors to guide the aircraft to a designated area for emergency landing. C. Coordinate with neighbouring sectors to establish radar monitoring of the affected aircraft. D. Initiate communication 
with the aircraft using alternate frequencies and relay instructions. Correct answer A. Instruct nearby aircraft to maintain visual separation and avoid the affected aircraft. Explanation When faced with an aircraft experiencing radio communication failure in controlled airspace, Mr. Johnson should immediately instruct nearby aircraft to maintain visual separation and avoid the affected aircraft. This ensures safety by preventing potential conflicts and maintaining adequate spacing between aircraft. Option B may be considered if radar vectors can safely guide the aircraft to an appropriate landing area. Option C involves coordinating monitoring but may not immediately resolve the situation. Option D is appropriate for establishing communication using alternate means but requires confirmation of the aircraft's response. Instructing Visual Separation Alliance with established procedures to manage aircraft without radio contact safely in controlled airspace. Question 27, MS. Garcia, an air traffic controller, observes an aircraft experiencing a loss of cabin pressure while cruising at high altitude. What immediate actions should MS. Garcia take to assist the pilot? A. Instruct the pilot to initiate an emergency descent to a safe altitude. B. Coordinate with nearby aircraft for visual confirmation of the aircraft's condition. C. Issue a mayday call and alert search and rescue operations for immediate assistance. D. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. Correct answer A. Instruct the pilot to initiate an emergency descent to a safe altitude. Explanation When an aircraft experiences a loss of cabin pressure at high altitude, MS. Uh, Garcia should instruct the pilot to initiate an emergency descent to a safe altitude where passengers and crew can breathe without supplemental oxygen. Rapid descent helps alleviate the effects of hypoxia and ensures the safety and well-being of those on board. Option B involves coordination but may not provide immediate relief for the cabin pressure issue. Option C is appropriate for severe emergencies requiring external assistance. Option D may be considered if immediate landing is necessary but depends on the severity of the cabin pressure loss. Instructing an emergency descent aligns with established procedures to mitigate risks associated with cabin pressure emergencies in air traffic control operations. Question 28. Mr. Anderson, an air traffic controller, observes conflicting traffic on approach paths to two nearby airports under his control. What immediate actions should Mr. Anderson take to resolve the conflict? A. Instruct one aircraft to alter course to maintain separation from the other. B. Clear one aircraft for an expedited landing to prioritise its approach. C. Coordinate with adjacent sectors to reroute one of the aircraft to a different airport. D. Provide radar vectors to establish vertical separation between the conflicting aircraft. Correct answer A. Instruct one aircraft to alter course to maintain separation from the other. Explanation When observing conflicting traffic on approach paths to nearby airports, Mr. Anderson should immediately instruct one aircraft to alter course to maintain safe lateral separation from the other. This action helps prevent potential conflicts and ensures safe spacing between aircraft during approach and landing phases. Option B may prioritize one aircraft but does not address the conflict directly. Option C involves rerouting, which requires coordination and may not resolve the immediate conflict. Option D addresses vertical separation, which may be considered if lateral separation is not feasible. Instructing course alterations aligns with established procedures to manage traffic safely and efficiently in busy terminal airspace. Question 29. Mr. Taylor, an air traffic controller, encounters a situation where an aircraft experiences a hydraulic failure during approach for landing. What immediate action should Mr. Taylor take to manage the emergency? A. Instruct the pilot to perform a missed approach and enter a holding pattern. B. Clear the runway and alert emergency response services for immediate assistance. C. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. D. Coordinate with maintenance personnel to troubleshoot the hydraulic issue remotely. Correct answer. 
B, clear the runway and alert emergency response services for immediate assistance. Explanation. When faced with an aircraft experiencing a hydraulic failure during approach, Mr. Taylor should immediately clear the runway and alert emergency response services for immediate assistance. Clearing the runway ensures a safe environment for the distressed aircraft to land or perform necessary maneuvers. Option A may be considered if immediate landing is not feasible. Option C addresses emergency diversion but requires confirmation of landing options. Option D involves troubleshooting but may not provide immediate assistance. Clearing the runway and alerting emergency services align with established procedures to manage aircraft emergencies effectively and ensure the safety of passengers and crew. Question 30. Ms. Rodriguez, an air traffic controller, observes an aircraft experiencing a loss of electrical power while in controlled airspace. What immediate actions should Ms. Rodriguez take to assist the pilot? A. Instruct the pilot to divert to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. B. Issue radar vectors to guide the aircraft to maintain separation from other traffic. C. Coordinate with nearby aircraft for visual confirmation of the aircraft's condition. D. Advise the pilot to activate emergency transponder codes for radar tracking. Correct answer. A. Instruct the pilot to divert to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. Explanation. When an aircraft experiences a loss of electrical power in controlled airspace MS, Rodriguez should instruct the pilot to divert to the nearest suitable airport for an emergency landing. This action ensures the safety of passengers and crew by allowing the aircraft to land promptly and safely. Option B. Addresses separation but may not resolve the immediate emergency. Option C involves coordination but does not provide immediate assistance. Option D activates radar tracking but is secondary to ensuring a safe landing. Instructing diversion alliance with established procedures to manage aircraft emergencies effectively and prioritize safety in air traffic control operations. Question 31. Mr. Thompson, an air traffic controller, receives a distress call from a pilot reporting engine failure while flying at cruising altitude. What immediate actions should Mr. Thompson take to assist the pilot? A. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. B. Instruct the pilot to declare an emergency and activate transponder emergency codes. C. Coordinate with nearby aircraft for visual confirmation of the aircraft's condition. D. Advise the pilot to perform emergency checkers procedures and attempt engine restart. Correct answer. B. Instruct the pilot to declare an emergency and activate transponder emergency codes. Explanation. When receiving a distress call reporting engine failure at cruising altitude, Mr. Thompson should instruct the pilot to declare an emergency and activate transponder emergency codes. This action alerts nearby air traffic and emergency services to the aircraft's situation, ensuring priority handling and assistance is needed. Option A addresses diversion but does not activate emergency procedures. Option C involves coordination but does not prioritize immediate assistance. Option D suggests procedural steps but is secondary to declaring emergency status. Instructing emergency declaration aligns with established procedures to manage aircraft emergencies effectively and ensure timely support for distressed aircraft. Question 32. Why is understanding wind shear important for air traffic controllers? A. To predict thunderstorm development and issue weather advisories. B. To adjust aircraft spacing during approach and departure phases. C. To determine runway suitability based on surface wind conditions. D. To mitigate turbulence risks and ensure safe flight operations. Correct answer. B. To adjust aircraft spacing during approach and departure phases. Explanation. Understanding wind shear is crucial for air traffic controllers because it affects aircraft performance and safety during approach and departure phases. Wind shear refers to sudden changes in wind speed and direction, which can cause significant variations in aircraft speed and lift. Controllers adjust aircraft spacing to ensure safe separation and prevent potential hazards such as wake turbulence. Option A relates more to thunderstorm prediction than wind shear. 
Option C concerns runway selection, not spacing adjustments. Option D addresses turbulence more broadly. Adjusting spacing based on wind shear data enhances operational safety and efficiency in managing air traffic within terminal airspace. Question 33, MS. Lee, an air traffic controller, observes an aircraft deviating from its assigned flight path without prior clearance. What immediate actions should MS? Lee take to address the deviation, A. Issue an immediate corrective clearance to return the aircraft to its assigned path. B. Coordinate with adjacent sectors to rule out other traffic away from the deviating aircraft. C. Alert the pilot to the deviation and instruct corrective actions to resume the assigned path. D. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft back to its original flight path. Correct answer. C. Alert the pilot to the deviation and instruct corrective actions to resume the assigned path. Uh, explanation. When observing an aircraft deviating from its assigned flight path without clearance MS, Lee should immediately alert the pilot to the deviation and instruct corrective actions to resume the assigned path. This action ensures safety by restoring proper separation between aircraft and maintaining orderly traffic flows. Option A provides immediate clearance but does not address the deviation cause. Option B involves rerouting other traffic, which may not be necessary. Option D suggests guidance but requires pilot compliance. Alerting and instructing corrective actions align with established procedures to manage airspace safety and maintain operational efficiency. Question 34. What is the significance of using standard phraseology in air traffic control communications? A. To enhance controller pilot communication clarity and understanding. B. To comply with the international airspace regulations and protocols. C. To facilitate real time data sharing with aviation stakeholders. D. To prioritize emergency response coordination and efficiency. Correct answer A. To enhance controller pilot communication clarity and understanding. Explanation Using standard phraseology in air traffic control communications enhances clarity and understanding between controllers and pilots by using precise, universally recognized terms and procedures. Standard phraseology reduces the risk of miscommunication, ensures accurate transmission of instructions, and promotes safe and efficient air traffic operations. Option B relates more to regulatory compliance than phraseology. Option C involves data sharing, not communication. Option D addresses emergency response, not phraseology. Standard phraseology supports effective communication, minimizing errors and promoting situational awareness in managing aircraft movements within controlled airspace. Question 35. What is the primary purpose of an instrument landing system ILS in aviation? A. To provide pilots with precise lateral and vertical guidance during approach and landing. B. To communicate with ground stations for radar tracking. C. To facilitate satellite-based navigation using GPS signals. D. To monitor and regulate airport runway lighting systems. Correct answer A. To provide pilots with precise lateral and vertical guidance during approach and landing. Explanation The instrument landing system EELS provides pilots with precise lateral and vertical guidance during approach and landing in low visibility conditions. ILS uses radio signals to guide aircraft along the optimal descent path to the runway, ensuring accurate alignment and safe touchdown. Pilots rely on ILS to execute precision approaches and landings, particularly in adverse weather or reduced visibility situations. Option B pertains to radar tracking, not ILS functionality. Option C relates to GPS navigation, which is separate from ILS. Option D addresses runway lighting, not navigation guidance. Understanding ILS operations supports safe and efficient landing operations at airports equipped with this essential navigation aid. Question 36. Mr. Davis, an air traffic controller, receives a pilot report indicating severe turbulence at cruising altitude along a designated air route. What immediate actions should Mr. Davis take to ensure safety? A. Issue a notice to all aircraft along the affected route to divert to alternate airways. 
offbeat advised pilots to increase altitude to avoid turbulent zones. C. Instruct aircraft to reduce speed and maintain course along the designated route. D. Redirect aircraft to lower altitudes to mitigate turbulence effects. Correct answer. C. Instruct aircraft to reduce speed and maintain course along the designated route. Explanation. When severe turbulence is reported at cruising altitude along a designated air route, Mr. Davis should instruct aircraft to reduce speed and maintain course along the designated route. This action helps minimize the aircraft's exposure to turbulent conditions while maintaining established flight paths and ensuring operational continuity. Option A suggests diversion, which may not be necessary if turbulence is localized. Option B recommends altitude changes, which may not mitigate turbulence effectively. Option D involves altitude changes without considering turbulence severity, instructing speed reduction and maintaining course aligns with safety protocols to manage turbulence risks and maintain airspace efficiency. Question 37. MS. Foster, an air traffic controller, receives a report of an aircraft experiencing a medical emergency with an unconscious pilot. What immediate actions should MS Foster take to assist the distressed aircraft? A. Instruct nearby aircraft to maintain a safe distance and clear airspace for emergency descent. B. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. C. Establish direct radio communication with medical professionals for real-time assistance. D. Advise the pilot to activate the aircraft's emergency oxygen supply and assess passenger condition. Correct answer. B. Provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. Explanation. When receiving a report of an aircraft with an unconscious pilot, MS. Foster should provide radar vectors to guide the aircraft to the nearest suitable airport for emergency landing. This action ensures timely access to medical assistance and facilitates a safe landing for the distressed aircraft. Option A addresses airspace clearance but does not assist with landing. Option C involves communication but does not provide immediate landing guidance. Option D addresses onboard actions but does not assist with navigation. Providing radar vectors for emergency landing aligns with established procedures to manage medical emergencies and ensure the safety of passengers and crew. Question 38. In air traffic control communications, what does the term hold short to instruct pilots to do? A. To stop short of an intersecting runway or taxiway. B. To maintain altitude and course until further instructions are issued. C. To hold position on the runway and await takeoff clearance. D to expedite departure without delay from the runway. Correct answer A to stop short of an intersecting runway or taxiway. Explanation Hold short in air traffic control communications instructs pilots to stop short of an intersecting runway or taxiway and await further instructions. This phrase ensures safe separation between aircraft operating on intersecting paths and prevents runway incursions or conflicts. Option B pertains to maintaining flight path or continuity. Option C concerns runway waiting areas for takeoff. Option D focuses on timely departure from the runway. Clear communication using a hold short enhances runway safety and operational efficiency by managing aircraft movements and maintaining orderly traffic flows at airports. Question 39. Why is it important for air traffic controllers to interpret and relay ME, TAR and TAF reports accurately? A. To predict airspace congestion and implement traffic flow management measures. B. To assess airport conditions and determine runway suitability for landing and takeoff. C. To issue weather advisories and alerts to pilots operating in controlled airspace. D. To coordinate with aviation authorities for airspace closure during severe weather events. Correct answer. B. To assess airport conditions and determine runway suitability for landing and takeoff. Explanation. Interpreting and relaying ME, PAR, Meteorological Aerodrome Report and TAF. 
terminal aerodrome forecast reports accurately is essential for air traffic controllers to assess current and forecasted airport conditions. ME TAR reports provide real-time weather observations at airports, including visibility, wind direction and speed, cloud cover and temperature. TAF forecasts predict weather conditions affecting airport operations over specific periods. Controllers use this information to determine runway suitability, issue advisories to pilots, and adjust traffic flow management measures accordingly. Option A addresses traffic flow but not weather interpretation. Option C focuses on pilot advisories without runway suitability. Option D concerns airspace closure, not weather reporting. Accurate ME, TAR, and TAF interpretation support safe and efficient air traffic management by ensuring informed decision making based on current and forecasted weather conditions at airports. Question 40. Why is spatial orientation crucial for air traffic controllers? A. To monitor aircraft speed and altitude during approach and departure phases. B. To visualize and anticipate aircraft positions and movements in three-dimensional airspace. C. To maintain communication with pilots using standardized phraseology and protocols. D. To coordinate with ground personnel for airport operations and runway clearances. Correct answer. B. To visualize and anticipate aircraft positions and movements in three dimensional airspace. Explanation. Spatial orientation is crucial for air traffic controllers to visualize and anticipate aircraft positions and movements accurately in three dimensional airspace. Controllers must mentally map aircraft trajectories, maintain safe separation distances, and efficiently sequence arrivals and departures. Spatial reasoning skills enable controllers to assess airspace utilization, manage traffic flows, and coordinate aircraft movements effectively within terminal and en route airspace. Option A pertains more to speed and altitude monitoring. Option C relates to communication protocols. Option D involves coordination with ground personnel. Spatial orientation enhances controllers' situational awareness and supports safe and orderly air traffic operations by facilitating accurate visualization of aircraft positions and trajectories. Question 41. Mr. Garcia, an air traffic controller, receives a report of a bird strike affecting an aircraft shortly after takeoff. What immediate actions should Mr. Garcia take to ensure safety? A. Instruct nearby aircraft to maintain altitude and avoid the affected area. B. Issue a notice to all aircraft to return to their departure airports for inspection. C. Advise the pilot to initiate emergency procedures and return for landing if necessary. D. Deploy wildlife control units to the affected airport to mitigate bird activity. Correct answer. C. Advise the pilot to initiate emergency procedures and return for landing if necessary. Explanation. When receiving a report of a bird strike affecting an aircraft shortly after takeoff, Mr. Garcia should advise the pilot to initiate emergency procedures and return for landing if necessary. This action prioritizes the safety of passengers and crew by allowing the aircraft to land promptly and undergo inspection for potential damage. Option A. Addresses avoidance but does not assist the affected aircraft. Option B. Suggests extensive action that may not be warranted. Option D focuses on wildlife control but does not address immediate flight safety. Advising emergency procedures and potential landing aligns with established protocols to manage bird strike incidents effectively and ensure safe flight operations. Question 42. What are the primary responsibilities of center ARC controllers within the National Airspace System NAS? A. Managing aircraft during en route phases between airports. B. Coordinating tower operations and runway clearances. C. Conducting flight inspections and certifying navigation aids. D. Providing weather advisories and forecasts to pilots. Correct answer A. Managing aircraft during en route phases between airports. Explanation Center controllers, also known as ARTCC, Air Route Traffic Control Center controllers, are responsible for managing aircraft during en route phases between airports within the National Airspace System NAS. They provide services such as route clearances, altitude assignments, and traffic separation for aircraft flying at high altitudes and over long distances.
Sensor controllers ensure safe and efficient traffic flow across different sectors of the NAS, working to maintain proper spacing and sequencing of flights. Option B relates to tower operations, not on route control. Option C concerns navigation aid certification. Option D focuses on weather services, not on route traffic management. Understanding ARTCC responsibilities is essential for controllers to ensure seamless operations and airspace utilization across the national airspace grid. Question 43. Which navigation aid provides precise lateral and vertical guidance to aircraft during approach and landing? A vor, E, D, C, ILS, D, D, P, S. Correct answer. CILS Instrument Landing System. Explanation. The Instrument Landing System ILS provides precise lateral and vertical guidance to aircraft during approach and landing at airports. ILS uses radio signals to guide aircraft along a specific glide path and alignment with the runway, ensuring accurate touchdown and safe landing in various weather conditions, including low visibility. Pilots rely on ILS to conduct precision approaches and maintain spatial awareness during critical phases of flight. Option A, VOR provides lateral guidance only. Option B, NDB, is a non-precision approach aid. Option D, GPS offers navigation but is not specifically designed for precision approaches like ILS. Understanding ILS operations is crucial for pilots and controllers to ensure safe and efficient landing operations at airports equipped with this essential navigation aid. Question 44. Ennis Roberts, an air traffic controller, receives a report of a runway incursion involving an aircraft and ground vehicle. What immediate actions should Ennis Roberts take to mitigate the risk of further incidents? A. Issue an immediate hold to all departing aircraft until the runway is cleared. B. Instruct the aircraft and ground vehicle to maintain current positions for assessment. C. Advise nearby aircraft of the incursion and request ground personnel for assistance. D. Clear the runway and allow normal operations to resume once the incursion is resolved. Correct answer. B. Instruct the aircraft and ground vehicle to maintain current positions for assessment. Explanation. When faced with a runway incursion involving an aircraft and ground vehicle MS, Roberts should immediately instruct both parties to maintain their current positions for assessment. This action ensures safety by preventing further movement until the situation is evaluated and resolved. Option A halts departures but does not address the incursion course. Option C involves coordination but may not resolve immediate safety concerns. Option D assumes quick resolution without assessing safety risks. Instructing position maintenance allows controllers to gather information, coordinate with ground personnel and implement necessary measures to mitigate further risks and ensure safe runway operations. Question 45. According to Federal Aviation Regulations, FARS, what is the primary purpose of special use airspace to A. To designate restricted airspace for military training exercises. B. To facilitate general aviation flights outside controlled airspace. C. To establish corridors for international flights between designated countries. D. To manage air traffic flow in high density terminal airspace. Correct answer, A, to designate restricted airspace for military training exercises. Explanation, special use airspace, SUA under federal aviation regulations, FARS is designated to establish restricted airspace for military training exercises, weapons testing, or other specified purposes. SUA helps manage airspace by restricting general aviation flights and ensuring safety during military operations. Option B refers to uncontrolled airspace, not SUA. Option C relates to international flight corridors. Option D involves terminal airspace management, not SUA designation. Understanding SUA regulations is crucial for pilots and controllers to comply with airspace restrictions and maintain operational safety during military activities within designated airspace areas. Question 46. Why is clear and concise communication essential in air traffic control? A. To comply with international aviation regulations and protocols. B. To prevent misinterpretation of flight instructions by pilots. C. To coordinate airspace management with ground personnel. D. To enhance pilot awareness of surrounding traffic and weather conditions.
Correct answer, B to prevent misinterpretation of flight instructions by pilots. Explanation, clear and concise communication in air traffic control is essential to prevent misinterpretation of flight instructions by pilots. Controllers use standardized phraseology and clear instructions to convey critical information such as route clearances, altitude assignments, and traffic advisories. Clear communication enhances situational awareness for pilots, reduces the risk of errors, and promotes safe and efficient air traffic operations. Option A relates to regulatory compliance. Option C concerns ground coordination. Option D addresses awareness but does not emphasize communication clarity. Effective communication in ATC ensures accurate transmission of instructions and enhances operational safety by maintaining mutual understanding between controllers and pilots. Question 47. Mr. Thompson, an air traffic controller, observes an approaching thunderstorm affecting aircraft operations in terminal airspace. What immediate actions should Mr. Thompson take to ensure safety? A. Divert all arriving and departing flights to alternate airports outside the storm's path. B. Issue weather advisories to pilots and adjust arrival and departure sequences. C. Instruct aircraft to maintain current altitude and speed until the storm passes. D. Coordinate with meteorological services for real-time storm tracking and updates. Correct answer. B. Issue weather advisories to pilots and adjust arrival and departure sequences. Explanation. When facing an approaching thunderstorm affecting terminal airspace, Mr. Thompson should issue weather advisories to pilots and adjust arrival and departure sequences to mitigate potential hazards. This action informs pilots of adverse weather conditions and ensures orderly traffic management to avoid storm cells and turbulence. Option A involves extensive diversion without assessing storm severity. Option C maintains flight continuity but may expose aircraft to weather risks. Option D addresses weather tracking but does not address immediate operational adjustments. Issuing advisories and adjusting traffic sequences aligns with ATC protocols to maintain safety and efficiency during adverse weather events impacting terminal operations. Question 40. What is the purpose of DME, distance measuring equipment, in aviation, navigation? A. To provide accurate aircraft position information based on GPS signals. B. To transmit ground-based radar signals for aircraft tracking. C. To measure the distance from the aircraft to a ground station. D. To monitor weather conditions affecting navigation and flight paths. Correct answer. C. To measure the distance from the aircraft to a ground station. Explanation. Distance measuring equipment, DME, in aviation navigation is designed to measure the slant range distance from an aircraft to a ground-based DME. Station, DME, operates by sending and receiving signals between the aircraft and ground station, providing accurate distance information used for navigation and approach procedures. Pilots use DME to determine aircraft position relative to waypoints, airways, and navigation fixes, enhancing situational awareness and navigation accuracy. Option A pertains to GPS positioning. Option B relates to radar tracking. Option D involves weather monitoring. Understanding DME, functionality is essential for pilots and controllers to navigate safely and accurately within the national airspace system. Question 49. MS Nguyen, an air traffic controller, notices a loss of communication with an inbound commercial flight. What immediate actions should MS Nguyen take to ensure safety? A. Initiate emergency procedures and attempt to establish radio contact with the aircraft. B. Clear all nearby aircraft from the flight path and notify airport authorities. C. Activate transponder codes to assist in radar tracking of the aircraft. D. Coordinate with neighboring ATC facilities to locate the aircraft via radar. Correct answer. A. Initiate emergency procedures and attempt to establish radio contact with the aircraft. Explanation. When experiencing a loss of communication with an inbound commercial flight, MS, Nguyen should initiate emergency procedures and attempt to establish radio contact with the aircraft. 
This action enables controllers to confirm the aircraft's position, intentions, and any onboard emergencies, facilitating timely assistance and coordination with airport authorities if necessary. Option B involves evacuation procedures, which are not applicable in this scenario. Option C addresses radar tracking but does not prioritize communication restoration. Option D involves external coordination but delays immediate response. Initiating emergency procedures and radio contact attempts aligns with ATC protocols to ensure flight safety and operational continuity during communication loss incidents. Question 50. Why is understanding wind shear important for air traffic controllers? A. To predict thunderstorm development and issue severe weather alerts. B. To assess runway conditions and determine aircraft takeoff and landing capabilities. C. To anticipate changes in aircraft performance and adjust traffic flow management. D. To coordinate airspace closures during periods of high wind speed and turbulence. Correct answer. C. To anticipate changes in aircraft performance and adjust traffic flow management. Explanation. Understanding wind shear is crucial for air traffic controllers to anticipate sudden changes in wind speed and direction that can significantly impact aircraft performance during takeoff, landing, and flight. Wind shear can lead to sudden changes in airspeed, lift, and control responsiveness, affecting aircraft maneuverability and safety. Controllers use wind shear reports and forecasts to adjust traffic flow, issue advisories to pilots, and implement operational measures to maintain safe separation and mitigate potential hazards. Option A relates to severe weather alerts, not wind shear specifically. Option B concerns runway conditions but not wind effects. Option D addresses airspace closures but does not focus on wind shear effects. Anticipating wind shear helps controllers ensure safe and efficient air traffic operations by adapting to dynamic weather conditions affecting aircraft performance in the national airspace system. Question 51. How does spatial orientation assist air traffic controllers in managing aircraft movements? A. By visualizing flight paths and predicting potential conflicts between aircraft. B. By interpreting weather radar data to assess storm impact on airspace. C. By coordinating runway assignments and departure clearances for flights. D. By implementing traffic flow restrictions to manage peak airport congestion. Correct answer. A. By visualizing flight paths and predicting potential conflicts between aircraft. Explanation. Spatial orientation assists air traffic controllers in managing aircraft movements by visualizing flight paths, assessing aircraft positions relative to each other and potential conflicts, and maintaining safe separation distances in three-dimensional airspace. Controllers use spatial reasoning skills to sequence arrivals and departures, issue clearances, and adjust flight paths to avoid conflicts and ensure efficient traffic flow. Option B involves weather radar interpretation. Option C pertains to runway management. Option D addresses traffic flow restrictions but not spatial orientation. Visualizing flight paths and predicting conflicts enhances controllers' situational awareness and supports safe and orderly air traffic management within terminal and en route airspace. Question 52. What role does nonverbal communication play in air traffic control? A. To transmit urgent instructions during emergency situations. B. To clarify complex clearance instructions to pilots. C. To enhance situational awareness and reinforce verbal messages. D. To monitor aircraft movements and assess runway utilization. Correct answer. C. To enhance situational awareness and reinforce verbal messages. Explanation. Nonverbal communication in air traffic control plays a crucial role in enhancing situational awareness and reinforcing verbal messages between controllers and pilots. Controllers use nonverbal cues such as hand signals, radar displays, and visual aids to convey critical information, monitor aircraft movements, and maintain clear communication during busy and complex operational conditions. Nonverbal communication supports efficient coordination reduces the risk of misunderstandings, and ensures effective teamwork among air traffic control personnel and pilots. Option A focuses on urgent instruction delivery. Option B pertains to verbal clarification methods. Option D involves monitoring and assessment tasks.
utilizing nonverbal cues enhances communication effectiveness and operational safety in managing air traffic within the national airspace system. Question 53. According to Federal Aviation Regulations, FARS, what is the purpose of Class B airspace? A, to facilitate high density traffic flow at major airports. B, to accommodate general aviation flights and student pilots. C, to provide controlled airspace for IF, R flights near terminal areas. D, to establish restricted airspace for military training exercises. Correct answer A, to facilitate high density traffic flow at major airports. Explanation, Class B airspace under Federal Aviation Regulations, FARS, is designed to facilitate high density traffic flow at major airports and surrounding terminal areas. Class B airspace typically extends from the surface up to 10,000 feet MSL mean sea level and is tailored to accommodate the complex airspace needs associated with busy commercial airports. Air traffic controllers implement strict clearance requirements, sequencing procedures, and traffic flow management measures to ensure safe operations within Class B airspace. Option B pertains to Class D or E airspace. Option C relates to Class C airspace characteristics. Option D addresses special use airspace, sewer. Understanding Class B airspace regulations is essential for pilots and controllers operating near busy terminal areas to maintain airspace safety and operational efficiency. Question 54. Which of the following radar displays would an air traffic controller use to monitor aircraft in the terminal airspace surrounding an airport? A. Primary radar. B. Secondary radar. C. Mode C transponder. D. Modes transponder. Correct answer. B. Secondary radar. Explanation. Secondary radar is used in air traffic control to provide more detailed information about aircraft, including identification via transponder codes and altitude information via mode C. This type of radar is crucial in terminal areas where precise tracking of aircraft movements is required for safe and efficient operations. Option A, primary radar provides basic position information but does not include altitude or identification details. Options C and D are components of secondary radar systems but do not directly refer to the radar display used by controllers. Question 55. What is the primary function of a VOR EHF in a directional range navigation aid? A, to provide aircraft with precise altitude information. B. To transmit weather updates and advisories to pilots. C. To assist in determining aircraft position and course. D. To facilitate radar communication with air traffic controllers. Correct answer. C. To assist in determining aircraft position and course. Explanation. A VOR EHF and a directional range navigation aid primarily assists aircraft in determining their position and course relative to the VOR station. VOR stations transmit signals in all directions, allowing pilots to navigate along specific airways and routes based on radial and distance information provided by the VOR receiver in the aircraft. Pilots use VOR navigation for accurate navigation fixes, airway tracking, and establishing position relative to navigational waypoints. Option A pertains to altitude determination methods. Option B involves weather communication services. Option D addresses radar communication technologies. Understanding VOR functionality is essential for pilots to navigate safely and accurately within the national airspace system using ground-based navigation aids. Question 56. Mr. Davis, an air traffic controller, observes an aircraft deviating significantly from its assigned altitude without clearance. What immediate actions should Mr. Davis take to rectify the situation? A. Issue an immediate traffic alert to all aircraft in the vicinity. B. Instruct the aircraft to return to its assigned altitude immediately. C. Contact the pilot to clarify the reason for the altitude deviation. D. Notify supervisory personnel and prepare a deviation report. Correct answer. B. Instruct the aircraft to return to its assigned altitude immediately.
explanation when observing an aircraft deviating significantly from its assigned altitude without clearance mr davis should immediately instruct the aircraft to return to its assigned altitude to restore separation and ensure safety this action addresses the immediate risk of collision or conflict with other aircraft operating in the vicinity option a pertains to traffic alert protocols option c involves communication clarification option d addresses reporting procedures but delays immediate action instructing the aircraft to correct its altitude deviation aligns with air traffic control procedures to maintain airspace safety and operational integrity by ensuring compliance with assigned flight levels and separation requirements question 57 what are the primary responsibilities of tower act controllers within the national airspace system nas a managing aircraft during en route phases between airports B. Providing weather forecasts and advisories to pilots. C. Coordinating ground movements and runway operations. D. Conducting flight inspections and certifying navigation aids. Correct answer. C. Coordinating ground movements and runway operations. Explanation. Tower Act controllers are primarily responsible for coordinating ground movements and runway operations at airports within the National Airspace System NAS. They manage aircraft taxiing, takeoff and landing procedures, ensuring safe separation and efficient flow of traffic on airport surfaces. Tower controllers communicate with pilots using standardized phraseology to issue clearances, instructions and advisories related to runway usage, traffic sequencing and safety protocols. Option A pertains to ARTCC responsibilities. Option B involves weather services. Option D concerns navigation aid certification. Understanding tower controller responsibilities is essential for maintaining safe and orderly airport operations and minimizing runway incursions within controlled airspace. Question 58. Why is traffic flow management critical during peak hours at major airports? A. To expedite aircraft departures and reduce airport congestion. B. To ensure sufficient fuel reserves for extended flight delays. C. To coordinate emergency response services during incidents. D. To prioritize passenger boarding and baggage handling. Correct answer A to expedite aircraft departures and reduce airport congestion. Explanation Traffic flow management during peak hours at major airports is critical to expedite aircraft departures and minimize airport congestion. Controllers use strategic sequencing, spacing, and departure flow control measures to maintain efficient traffic flow on runways and taxiways, reducing delays and enhancing operational capacity. Efficient traffic management supports on time departures, improves airspace utilization, and reduces fuel burn associated with extended taxi times and airborne holding patterns. Option B addresses fuel management. Option C involves emergency services coordination. Option D pertains to airport ground operations. Managing traffic flow optimizes airport resources and enhances overall flight efficiency during peak operational periods within the National Airspace System. Question 59. MS. Lopez, an air traffic controller, receives conflicting flight plan information for two approaching aircraft assigned to intersecting flight paths. What immediate actions should MS? Lopez take to prevent a potential mid-air collision, a instruct both aircraft to hold their positions and maintain current altitudes, b issue updated flight clearances to divert one aircraft from its original path, c contact neighboring ATC facilities to request airspace reconfiguration, d initiate emergency descent procedures for both aircraft to avoid collision. Correct answer. B. Issue updated flight clearances to divert one aircraft from its original path. Explanation. When faced with conflicting flight plan information for approaching aircraft on intersecting paths MS, Lopez should issue updated flight clearances to divert one aircraft from its original path to prevent a potential mid-air collision. This action modifies aircraft trajectories to establish safe separation distances and avoid conflict points in airspace intersections. Option A involves holding instructions but does not resolve the conflict. Option C addresses airspace reconfiguration, which may be unnecessary for immediate conflict resolution. Option D pertains to emergency procedures that are not warranted unless immediate danger is imminent.
issuing updated clearances to divert aircraft aligns with ATC protocols to ensure airspace safety and prevent potential mid-air collisions within the national airspace system. Question 60. Under Federal Aviation Regulations, FARS, what is the purpose of Class C airspace? A. To accommodate high-performance aircraft operations. B. To segregate IFR traffic from VFR traffic near busy airports. C. To establish restricted airspace for national security purposes. D. To facilitate air traffic flow management over urban areas. Correct answer. B. To segregate IFR traffic from VFR traffic near busy airports. Explanation. Class C airspace under Federal Aviation Regulations, FARS, is designated to segregate instrument flight rules, IFA, traffic from visual flight rules, VFR, traffic near busy airports. Class C airspace typically extends from the surface up to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation and is designed to enhance safety by providing controlled airspace for IFR operations while accommodating VFR flights under specific communication and clearance requirements. Air traffic controllers manage traffic within Class C airspace to maintain safe separation and efficient flow of aircraft, ensuring operational integrity and airspace utilization near terminal areas. Option A relates to Class D airspace characteristics. Option C involves special use airspace, sewer. Option D pertains to traffic flow management, but not airspace classification. Understanding Class C airspace regulations is essential for pilots and controllers to operate safely within controlled airspace near busy airports. Question 61. How does GPS Global Positioning System enhance air traffic control operations? A. By providing accurate altitude and speed information for aircraft. B. By transmitting weather radar updates to air traffic controllers. C. By enabling precise aircraft tracking and navigation worldwide. D. By facilitating voice communication between pilots and controllers. Correct answer. C. By enabling precise aircraft tracking and navigation worldwide. Explanation. GPS Global Positioning System enhances air traffic control operations by enabling precise aircraft tracking, navigation, and position reporting worldwide. GPS receivers on board aircraft receive signals from satellites to determine accurate position coordinates, velocity, and time information, facilitating seamless navigation along designated flight paths, airways, and approaches. Air traffic controllers use GPS data to monitor aircraft movements, provide accurate position updates to pilots, and optimize airspace utilization for safe and efficient operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Option A pertains to onboard avionics systems. Option B involves weather radar technologies. Option D addresses voice communication technologies. Utilizing GPS enhances situational awareness and operational efficiency in air traffic control by ensuring precise aircraft positioning and navigation capabilities. Question 62. Mr. Anderson, an air traffic controller, encounters a sudden loss of radar data for multiple aircraft within his sector. What immediate actions should Mr. Anderson take to manage the situation effectively? A. Instruct pilots to maintain current altitude and speed until radar data is restored. B. Activate secondary radar systems to resume aircraft tracking capabilities. C. Notify adjacent AT, C facilities to coordinate airspace management. D. Implement procedural separation standards based on last known positions. Correct answer. D. Implement procedural separation standards based on last known positions. Explanation. When experiencing a sudden loss of radar data for multiple aircraft, Mr. Anderson should implement procedural separation standards based on last known positions to maintain safe aircraft separation and airspace management. Procedural separation involves using predetermined time, distance or altitude intervals to ensure safe separation until radar data is restored or alternative tracking methods are established. Option A involves maintaining flight parameters but does not address separation standards. Option B pertains to radar system operations. Option C involves airspace coordination but may not be immediate or necessary. 
implementing procedural separation based on last known positions aligns with ATC protocols to ensure continuous safety and operational integrity during radar data disruptions within the national airspace system. Question 63. Why is it important for air traffic controllers to interpret and relay ME, TAR and TAF reports accurately A, to predict the development of thunderstorms and issue severe weather alerts? B, to assess runway conditions and determine airport operational capabilities? C, to coordinate airspace closures during periods of adverse weather conditions? D, to provide pilots with real-time weather updates and flight advisories? Correct answer, D, to provide pilots with real-time weather updates and flight advisories. Explanation, interpreting and relaying ME, TAR, Meteorological Aerodrome Report, and TAF, Terminal Aerodrome Forecast, reports accurately as essential for air traffic controllers to provide pilots with real-time weather updates and flight advisories. ME, TAR reports provide current weather conditions at airports, including visibility, wind speed and direction, temperature and cloud cover. TAF forecasts predict weather conditions expected at specific airports over a 24 to 30 hour period, aiding pilots in flight planning and decision making. Controllers use ME, TAR and TAF data to issue weather advisories, coordinate operational adjustments and ensure safe flight operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Option A involves severe weather forecasting. Option B pertains to runway condition assessment. Option C addresses airspace management during adverse weather events. Accurate interpretation and relay of ME, TAR and TAF reports support pilots in navigating weather-related challenges and maintaining flight safety. Question 64. What factors should air traffic controllers consider when prioritizing aircraft during peak traffic periods? A. Aircraft size and weight. Prioritizing larger commercial flights. B. Flight duration and fuel reserves. Prioritizing long-haul flights. C. Departure and arrival schedules. Prioritizing on-time performance. D. Aircraft type and operational urgency. Prioritizing emergency flights. Correct answer. D. Aircraft type and operational urgency prioritizing emergency flights. Explanation. When prioritizing aircraft during peak traffic periods, air traffic controllers should consider aircraft type and operational urgency prioritizing emergency flights requiring immediate assistance or medical emergencies on board. Controllers coordinate with airline dispatchers, airport authorities, and emergency services to expedite handling of emergency aircraft, ensuring timely arrival at designated airports for medical attention or operational support. Option A involves aircraft size considerations. Option B pertains to flight planning factors. Option C addresses scheduling priorities. Prioritizing emergency flight supports air traffic control efforts in maintaining operational efficiency and responding promptly to critical situations within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 65. How does effective communication enhance safety and efficiency in air traffic control operations? A. By minimizing radio frequency congestion during peak traffic periods. B. By enabling clear and concise transmission of instructions to pilots. C. By facilitating automated data exchange between AT, C facilities. D. By enhancing radar surveillance capabilities in congested airspace. Correct answer. B. By enabling clear and concise transmission of instructions to pilots. Explanation. Effective communication enhances safety and efficiency in air traffic control operations by enabling clear and concise transmission of instructions, advisories, and information between controllers and pilots. Controllers use standardized phraseology and communication protocols to convey clear instructions regarding aircraft movements, clearances, traffic advisories, and emergency procedures, reducing the risk of misunderstandings and ensuring accurate compliance with ATC directives. Option A involves radio frequency management. Option C pertains to automated data processing systems. Option D addresses radar surveillance technologies. Clear communication fosters situational awareness, supports timely decision making, and promotes safe and orderly aircraft operations within the National Airspace System NAS. 
Question 66. Explain the role of TRACON terminal radar approach control facilities in the National Airspace System, NASA, to manage high altitude en route traffic between major airports. B, to coordinate airspace transitions for arriving and departing flights. C, to conduct flight inspections and certify navigation aids. D, to provide weather updates and advisories to pilots. Correct answer. B, to coordinate airspace transitions for arriving and departing flights. Explanation. TRACON, Terminal Radar Approach Control, facilities play a critical role in the National Airspace System NAS by coordinating airspace transitions for arriving and departing flights within terminal areas surrounding major airports. TRACON controllers manage aircraft as they approach and depart from airport terminals, ensuring safe sequencing, spacing, and traffic flow management. Controllers use radar surveillance and communication systems to provide clearances, vector aircraft for final approach, and maintain safe separation until handoff to tower controllers or en route sensors. Option A pertains to ARTCC responsibilities. Option C involves navigation aid certification. Option D addresses weather services. Understanding TRACON functions is essential for maintaining efficient terminal operations and airspace management within controlled airspace. Question 67. How does spatial orientation assist air traffic controllers in managing traffic flow during adverse weather conditions? A. By predicting wind shear events and issuing warnings to pilots. B. By visualizing aircraft positions and adjusting separation standards. C. By interpreting weather radar data and adjusting flight paths. D. By coordinating runway closures and diverting flights to alternate airports. Correct answer. B. By visualizing aircraft positions and adjusting separation standards. Explanation. Spatial orientation assists air traffic controllers in managing traffic flow during adverse weather conditions by visualizing aircraft positions in three-dimensional space and adjusting separation standards to ensure safe distances between aircraft. Controllers use spatial reasoning skills to monitor weather conditions, assess potential hazards, and implement traffic management strategies to maintain operational safety and efficiency. Visualizing aircraft positions helps controllers optimize airspace utilization, adjust routing, and coordinate flight paths to mitigate weather-related impacts on airport operations. Option A involves weather warning protocols. Option C pertains to radar data interpretation. Option D addresses airport operations management. Spatial orientation enhances controllers' situational awareness and supports effective decision-making in managing air traffic within the National Airspace System, NAS. Question 68. Mr. Roberts, an air traffic controller, receives a distress call from an aircraft reporting engine failure and requesting immediate landing clearance. What actions should Mr. Roberts prioritize to handle this emergency situation? A. Direct nearby aircraft to maintain current altitudes and hold positions. B. Assign an emergency squawk code and expedite clearance for the distressed aircraft. C. Contact airport emergency services and establish an emergency landing route. D. Advise the distressed aircraft to attempt engine restart procedures and maintain altitude. Correct answer. B. Assign an emergency squawk code and expedite clearance for the distressed aircraft. Explanation. In response to an aircraft reporting engine failure and requesting immediate landing clearance, Mr. Roberts should prioritize assigning an emergency squawk code to the distressed aircraft and expediting its clearance for landing. This action alerts radar surveillance systems and nearby aircraft to the emergency situation, allowing controllers to prioritize airspace for the distressed aircraft's safe landing. Option A involves holding instructions but does not address emergency priority. Option C pertains to emergency services coordination. Option D addresses procedural guidance for emergency procedures but delays immediate landing clearance. Assigning an emergency squawk code and expediting clearance supports air traffic control efforts in managing emergency situations and ensuring swift response to critical incidents within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 69. Explain the significance of DME, distance measuring equipment in air traffic control operations are to provide precise altitude information for aircraft. 
B, to transmit weather updates and advisories to pilots. C, to determine accurate aircraft positions relative to ground stations. D, to facilitate voice communication between pilots and controllers. Correct answer. C, to determine accurate aircraft positions relative to ground stations. Explanation. Distance measuring equipment, DME, plays a crucial role in air traffic control operations by providing accurate distance and bearing information between aircraft and ground stations. DME stations emit signals that aircraft equipment can receive and measure, allowing controllers to determine precise aircraft positions along designated airways, approaches, and holding patterns. Controllers use DME data to monitor aircraft separation, sequence arrivals and departures, and ensure safe navigation within the National Airspace System NAS. Option A pertains to altitude measurement systems. Option B involves weather communication services. Option D addresses voice communication technologies. Understanding DME functionality enhances controllers' ability to maintain airspace safety and operational efficiency by accurately tracking aircraft positions and facilitating precise navigation capabilities. Question 70. During a sudden loss of radio communication with an aircraft, what procedures should air traffic controllers follow to ensure continued aircraft separation and safety? A. Initiate emergency descent procedures and divert nearby traffic. B. Use secondary radar systems to monitor aircraft movements. C. Issue clearances based on predicted aircraft positions. D. Implement procedural separation based on last known instructions. Correct answer. D. Implement procedural separation based on last known instructions. Explanation. In the event of a sudden loss of radio communication within aircraft, air traffic controllers should implement procedural separation based on the last known instructions to maintain continued aircraft separation and safety. Procedural separation involves using predetermined time, distance or altitude intervals to ensure safe spacing between aircraft until radio communication is re-established or alternative instructions are provided. Option A involves emergency procedures that are not warranted without communication confirmation. Option B pertains to radar monitoring systems. Option C involves predictive clearance issuance without direct communication. Implementing procedural separation based on last known instructions aligns with ATC protocols to ensure airspace safety and operational integrity during communication disruptions within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 71. How does effective communication between ground controllers and pilots improve situational awareness and operational efficiency during taxiing and ground movements at airports? A. By minimizing ground collisions and runway incursions. B. By transmitting real-time weather updates to pilots. C. By coordinating gate assignments and passenger boarding. D. By optimizing fuel consumption during taxi operations. Correct answer, A, by minimizing ground collisions and runway incursions. Explanation, effective communication between ground controllers and pilots improves situational awareness and operational efficiency during taxiing and ground movements at airports by minimizing ground collisions and runway incursions. Controllers use standardized phraseology and clear instructions to direct aircraft movements, issue taxi clearances, and coordinate runway crossings to ensure safe navigation on airport surfaces. Pilots rely on ground controller communications to adhere to taxi routes, maintain safe distances from other aircraft, and comply with airport traffic flow management procedures. Option B involves weather updates. Option C pertains to airport ground operations management. Option D addresses fuel efficiency considerations. Enhancing communication fosters mutual understanding, supports timely decision making, and enhances overall safety during ground operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 72. What are the primary responsibilities of air traffic controllers regarding special VFR operations? A. Issuing clearances for aircraft to operate in controlled airspace under reduced visibility conditions. B. Monitoring aircraft conducting flight training activities within designated training areas. C. Coordinating military flight operations in restricted airspace zones. D. Conducting flight inspections and certifying navigation aids.
Correct answer, a issue in clearances for aircraft to operate in controlled airspace under reduced visibility conditions. Explanation, air traffic controllers primary responsibility regarding special VFR, visual flight rules, operations includes issuing clearances for aircraft to operate within controlled airspace under reduced visibility conditions, typically when visibility is below VFR minimums, but still acceptable for safe flight operations. Controllers provide clearances and advisories to pilots to ensure safe separation from other traffic and to maintain situational awareness during special VFR operations. Option B pertains to flight training activities. Option C involves military flight coordination. Option D addresses navigation aid certification. Understanding special VFR procedures is essential for controllers to manage airspace effectively and ensure safe operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 73. During adverse weather conditions, how do air traffic controllers prioritize aircraft for landing at an airport with reduced visibility? Option A. By assigning approach speeds based on aircraft size and weight. B. By implementing ground delay programs to manage arrival flow. C. By coordinating aircraft diversions to alternate airports. D. By conducting weather radar sweeps to assess storm severity. Correct answer. B. By implementing ground delay programs to manage arrival flow. Explanation. During adverse weather conditions with reduced visibility, air traffic controllers prioritize aircraft for landing at airports by implementing ground delay programs to manage arrival flow efficiently. Controllers establish arrival sequencing based on aircraft type, operational urgency and available runway capacity to ensure safe and orderly traffic management. Ground delay programs minimize airborne holding, optimize fuel efficiency and enhance airspace utilization during peak traffic periods affected by adverse weather. Option A involves approach procedures. Option C pertains to airport diversions. Option D addresses weather monitoring techniques. Implementing ground delay programs supports controllers in maintaining situational awareness and operational efficiency while mitigating weather-related impacts on airport operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 74. Why is confidentiality important in air traffic control communications? A. To prevent unauthorized access to sensitive flight information. B. To ensure accurate transmission of weather advisories to pilots. C. To prioritize emergency communication channels during critical incidents. D. To maintain secure data transmission between AT, C facilities. Correct answer. A. To prevent unauthorized access to sensitive flight information. Explanation. Confidentiality is crucial in air traffic control communications to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive flight information, including aircraft positions, flight plans, and passenger manifests. Controllers adhere to strict confidentiality protocols to safeguard operational security, prevent data breaches, and protect airspace integrity within the National Airspace System NAS. Option B involves weather advisory transmissions. Option C pertains to emergency communication procedures. Option D addresses data security measures. Maintaining confidentiality ensures that only authorized personnel have access to critical flight information, supporting safe and secure air traffic management practices. Understanding confidentiality protocols is essential for controllers to uphold ethical standards and maintain public trust in aviation safety and operational integrity. Question 75. Explain the role of automated radar terminal systems ARTS, in modern air traffic control operations uh, to facilitate automated flight data processing and conflict resolution. B. To manage airport ground operations and gate assignments. C. To conduct weather radar sweeps and issue severe weather alerts. D. To coordinate military flight operations in restricted airspace zones. Correct answer, A, to facilitate automated flight data processing and conflict resolution. Explanation, automated radar terminal systems ARTS play a critical role in modern air traffic control operations by facilitating automated flight data processing and conflict resolution. 
ARTS systems use radar data to monitor aircraft positions, calculate separation standards, and predict potential conflicts, enhancing controller situational awareness and operational efficiency within terminal airspace. Controllers rely on ARTS capabilities to manage traffic flow issue clearances and maintain safe aircraft separation during peak traffic periods and adverse weather conditions. Option B pertains to ground operations management. Option C involves whether radar functions. Option D addresses military flight coordination. Understanding ARTS functionalities is essential for controllers to optimize airspace utilization and ensure safe and orderly operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 76. Why is understanding wind shear phenomena crucial for air traffic controllers? A. To predict microburst events and issue severe weather alerts. B. To interpret ME, TAR reports and assess airport operational conditions. C. To adjust aircraft approach speeds and landing procedures. D. To conduct flight inspections and certify navigation aids. Correct answer. C. To adjust aircraft approach speeds and landing procedures. Explanation. Understanding wind shear phenomena is crucial for air traffic controllers to adjust aircraft approach speeds and landing procedures, ensuring safe and stable landings during variable wind conditions. Wind shear refers to sudden changes in wind direction and speed within short distances, potentially affecting aircraft performance during takeoff and landing phases. Controllers use wind shear data and pilot reports to provide timely advisories, adjust runway operations, and implement safety measures to mitigate the risks associated with wind shear events. Option A involves severe weather forecasting. Option B pertains to airport operational assessments. Option D addresses navigation aids certification. Enhancing wind shear awareness supports controllers in maintaining operational safety and facilitating smooth aircraft operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 77. How does spatial orientation assist air traffic controllers in managing simultaneous aircraft movements in complex airspace? A. By predicting aircraft convergence points and issuing collision avoidance advisories. B. By visualizing aircraft positions and adjusting separation standards. C. By interpreting weather radar data and issuing flight path diversions. D. By coordinating airport ground operations and gate assignments. Correct answer. B. By visualizing aircraft positions and adjusting separation standards. Explanation. Spatial orientation assists air traffic controllers in managing simultaneous aircraft movements in complex airspace by visualizing aircraft positions in three-dimensional space and adjusting separation standards to ensure safe distances between aircraft. Controllers use spatial reasoning skills to monitor aircraft trajectories, predict potential conflict points, and optimize traffic flow through strategic vectoring and sequencing techniques. Visualizing aircraft positions enhances controllers' situational awareness, supports effective decision-making, and facilitates smooth coordination of arrivals, departures, and en-route traffic within the National Airspace System NAS. Option A involves collision avoidance procedures. Option C pertains to weather radar functions. Option D addresses ground operations management. Enhancing spatial orientation skills enables controllers to maintain airspace safety and operational efficiency during peak traffic periods and complex traffic scenarios. Question 78. Explain the role of GPS Global Positioning System in air traffic control and its impact on modern aviation operations are to provide real-time weather updates and advisories to pilots. B. To facilitate precise navigation and aircraft tracking worldwide. C. To conduct flight inspections and certify navigation aids. D. To coordinate airspace closures during severe weather events. Correct answer. B. To facilitate precise navigation and aircraft tracking worldwide. Explanation. GPS, Global Positioning System, plays a crucial role in air traffic control by facilitating precise navigation and aircraft tracking worldwide. 
GPS receivers on board aircraft use signals from satellites to determine accurate position, velocity, and time information, enabling controllers to monitor aircraft movements, calculate separation standards, and optimize flight paths within the National Airspace System NAS. Controllers rely on GPS data for efficient routing, airspace utilization, and situational awareness during all phases of flight, including en route, terminal, and approach operations. Option A involves weather advisory services. Option C pertains to navigation aids certification. Option D addresses airspace management during weather events. Understanding GPS capabilities enhances controllers' ability to ensure safe and efficient aviation operations through reliable navigation and tracking technologies. Question 79. During a major airport closure due to a security breach, how should air traffic controllers manage diverted flights and maintain operational continuity? A. By implementing ground delay programs and adjusting arrival flow rates. B. By conducting weather radar sweeps and issuing flight path diversions. C. By coordinating emergency services and securing alternate airport routes. D. By prioritizing fuel efficient flight paths and optimizing fuel consumption. Correct answer, A, by implementing ground delay programs and adjusting arrival flow rates. Explanation, during a major airport closure due to a security breach, air traffic controllers should manage diverted flights and maintain operational continuity by implementing ground delay programs to manage arrival flow rates efficiently. Controllers adjust flight schedules, issue holding instructions, and coordinate diversion routes to alternate airports to minimize airspace congestion and ensure safe aircraft separation within the National Airspace System NAS. Option B involves weather monitoring and diversions. Option C pertains to emergency response coordination. Option D addresses fuel efficiency considerations. Implementing ground delay programs supports controllers in maintaining situational awareness and operational control during unexpected disruptions, promoting safe and orderly flight operations despite operational challenges. Question 80. Why is adherence to federal aviation regulations FARS critical for air traffic controllers? A. To ensure safe and efficient airspace utilization and traffic management. B. To maintain clear and concise communication with pilots and ground staff. C. To conduct flight inspections and certify airport navigation aids. D. To facilitate weather advisory transmissions and severe weather alerts. Correct answer A. To ensure safe and efficient airspace utilization and traffic management. Explanation Adherence to Federal Aviation Regulations FARS, is critical for air traffic controllers to ensure safe and efficient airspace utilization and traffic management within the National Airspace System NAS. FARS define operational standards, procedures and responsibilities that controllers must follow to maintain airspace safety, optimize traffic flow and mitigate risks associated with air traffic operations. Controllers apply FARS to issue clearances, manage aircraft separation, and coordinate airspace activities in compliance with established rules and regulations. Option B involves communication protocols. Option C pertains to navigation aid certification. Option D addresses weather advisory services. Understanding and applying FARS support controllers in upholding aviation safety standards and promoting professional conduct in air traffic control operations. Question 81. Explain the role of traffic flow management, TFM, in air traffic control operations and its impact on airspace efficiency to coordinate ground operations and gate assignments at busy airports. B. To manage aircraft separation and sequencing during approach and landing. C. To conduct weather radar sweeps and issue severe weather alerts. D. To facilitate flight inspections and certify airport navigation aids. Correct answer, B to manage aircraft separation and sequencing during approach and landing. Explanation, traffic flow management, TFM, plays a crucial role in air traffic control operations by managing aircraft separation and sequencing during approach and landing phases. TFM systems use data analytics, weather forecasts, and airspace capacity assessments to optimize arrival rates, reduce delays, and maintain safe spacing between aircraft within terminal airspace.
Controllers rely on TFM tools to adjust arrival flows, issue holding instructions, and coordinate runway assignments to enhance airspace efficiency and minimize congestion during peak traffic periods. Option A involves ground operations management. Option C pertains to weather radar functions. Option D addresses navigation aid certification. Understanding TFM principle supports controllers in optimizing airspace utilization and ensuring safe and efficient aviation operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 82. How do thunderstorms impact air traffic control operations and what strategies do controllers employ to mitigate their effects? A. By implementing ground delay programs and adjusting arrival flow rates. B. By issuing weather advisories and routing flights around storm cells. C. By coordinating emergency services and securing alternate airport routes. D. By prioritizing fuel efficient flight paths and optimizing fuel consumption. Correct answer, B, by issuing weather advisories and rerouting flights around storm cells. Explanation, thunderstorms impact air traffic control operations by introducing hazards such as turbulence, lightning, and heavy precipitation, which can disrupt flight paths and airport operations. Controllers mitigate thunderstorm effects by issuing weather advisories, monitoring radar data, and rerouting flights around active storm cells to ensure aircraft safety and minimize weather-related delays within the National Airspace System NAS. Option A involves ground delay programs. Option C pertains to emergency response coordination. Option D addresses fuel efficiency considerations. Issuing weather advisories and rerouting strategies enable controllers to maintain situational awareness, optimize traffic flow, and support efficient airspace management during adverse weather conditions. Question 83. Mr. Parker, an air traffic controller, observes a sudden drop in radar contact with an aircraft flying over mountainous terrain. What immediate actions should Mr. Parker take to manage the situation effectively? A. Initiate search and rescue procedures and coordinate with local authorities. B. Contact nearby airports and issue flight path diversions for other aircraft. C. Conduct weather radar sweeps and assess terrain conditions for potential hazards. D. Implement procedural separation based on last known aircraft positions. Correct answer. D. Implement procedural separation based on last known aircraft positions. Explanation. In response to a sudden loss of radar contact within aircraft over mountainous terrain, Mr. Parker should implement procedural separation based on the last known aircraft positions to maintain safe airspace management and operational continuity. Procedural separation involves using predefined intervals and routes to ensure safe distances between aircraft until radar contact is re-established or alternative instructions are received. Option A involves search and rescue protocols. Option B pertains to flight diversions. Option C addresses terrain assessment. Implementing procedural separation supports controllers in maintaining situational awareness, minimizing airspace congestion, and ensuring effective traffic management within the National Airspace System NAS. Question 84. Explain the importance of spatial orientation skills for air traffic controllers when managing simultaneous aircraft movements in busy terminal airspace air by predicting aircraft convergence points and issuing collision avoidance advisories. B. By coordinating airport gate assignments and ground operations. C. By conducting weather radar sweeps and issuing severe weather alerts. D. By optimizing fuel efficient flight paths and reducing carbon emissions. Correct answer, A, by predicting aircraft convergence points and issuing collision avoidance advisories. Explanation, spatial orientation skills are crucial for air traffic controllers when managing simultaneous aircraft movements in busy terminal airspace by predicting aircraft convergence points and issuing collision avoidance advisories. Controllers use spatial reasoning to visualize aircraft positions in three-dimensional space, anticipate potential conflicts, and implement timely traffic management decisions to maintain safe separation and efficient traffic flow within the National Airspace System NAS. Option B involves ground operations management. Option C pertains to weather radar functions. Option D addresses environmental considerations. 
Enhancing spatial orientation skills enables controllers to enhance situational awareness, mitigate airspace congestion, and ensure operational safety during high traffic conditions and complex traffic scenarios. Question 85. Why is effective communication with pilots crucial for air traffic controllers during emergency situations such as engine failures or medical emergencies on board aircraft? 8. To coordinate search and rescue operations and initiate emergency response procedures. B. To issue weather advisories and route flights to avoid hazardous weather conditions. C. To prioritize emergency frequencies and manage emergency descent procedures. D. To conduct flight inspections and certify navigation aids. Correct answer. C. To prioritize emergency frequencies and manage emergency descent procedures. Explanation. Effective communication with pilots is crucial for air traffic controllers during emergency situations such as engine failures or medical emergencies on board aircraft to prioritize emergency frequencies and manage emergency descent procedures. Controllers use clear and concise instructions, standardized phraseology, and rapid response protocols to facilitate timely coordination, maintain situational awareness, and ensure safe resolution of emergency scenarios within the National Airspace System NAS. Option A involves search and rescue operations. Option B pertains to weather-related diversions. Option D addresses navigation aid certification. Prioritizing emergency frequencies supports controllers in managing critical incidents, mitigating risks, and safeguarding airspace integrity during emergency situations. Question 86. Why is maintaining situational awareness critical for air traffic controllers during high-density traffic operations at major airports? A. To optimize fuel-efficient flight paths and reduce carbon emissions. B. To conduct weather radar sweeps and issue severe weather alerts. C. To coordinate airport gate assignments and ground operations. D. To anticipate potential conflicts and ensure safe aircraft separation. Correct answer. D. To anticipate potential conflicts and ensure safe aircraft separation. Explanation. Maintaining situational awareness is critical for air traffic controllers during high-density traffic operations at major airports to anticipate potential conflicts and ensure safe aircraft separation within the National Airspace System NAS. Controllers monitor multiple aircraft movements, assess traffic flow, and proactively adjust separation standards and routing to prevent collisions and minimize delays. Situational awareness enables controllers to make informed decisions, implement traffic management strategies, and maintain operational efficiency during peak traffic periods and complex airspace environments. Option A involves environmental considerations. Option B pertains to weather radar functions. Option C addresses ground operations management. Enhancing situational awareness supports controllers in promoting airspace safety and optimizing air traffic control operations at busy airports. Question 87. Explain the significance of Part 91 of the Federal Aviation Regulations, FARS, in relation to air traffic control operations are establishing minimum equipment requirements for aircraft flying in controlled airspace. B. Defining rules for pilot certification and training standards. C. Regulating air traffic control procedures and separation standards. D. Establishing general operating and flight rules for all civil aviation in the United States. Correct answer. D. Establishing general operating and flight rules for all civil aviation in the United States. Explanation. Part 91 of the Federal Aviation Regulations. FARS establishes general operating and flight rules for all civil aviation in the United States, including regulations that govern air traffic control operations. These rules cover flight rules, including pilot responsibilities, airspace requirements, and operational limitations to ensure safe and efficient aviation operations within the National Airspace System NAS. Option A pertains to equipment requirements. Option B addresses pilot certification. Option C involves specific air traffic control procedures. Understanding Part 91 regulations is essential for air traffic controllers to comply with legal requirements and maintain airspace safety and efficiency. Question 88. 
During severe weather conditions, why is it crucial for air traffic controllers to interpret ME, TARS and TAFS accurately? A. To issue weather advisories and rule out flights to avoid hazardous weather conditions. B. To prioritize emergency frequencies and manage emergency descent procedures. C. To coordinate airport gate assignments and ground operations. D. To conduct flight inspections and certify navigation aids. Correct answer A. To issue weather advisories and route flights to avoid hazardous weather conditions. Explanation During severe weather conditions, air traffic controllers interpret ME, TARS, aviation routine weather reports, and TAFS terminal aerodrome forecasts accurately to issue weather advisories and route flights to avoid hazardous weather conditions within the National Airspace System NAS. ME, TARS provide current weather observations while TAFS offer short-term weather forecasts, enabling controllers to assess weather impacts, implement safety measures, and optimize traffic flow to minimize disruptions and ensure airspace safety. Option B involves emergency procedures. Option C pertains to ground operations. Option D addresses navigation aid certification. Accurate interpretation of ME, TARS, and TAFS supports controllers in making informed decisions and maintaining operational efficiency during adverse weather events. Question 89. Mr. Anderson, an air traffic controller, encounters conflicting aircraft approaching the same runway at a major airport. What strategy should Mr. Anderson employ to resolve the conflict effectively? A. Initiate emergency descent procedures and coordinate with emergency services. B. Implement procedural separation based on last known aircraft positions. C. Conduct weather radar sweeps and assess storm severity in the vicinity. D. Coordinate airport gate assignments and ground operations. Correct answer. B. Implement procedural separation based on last known aircraft positions. Explanation. In response to conflicting aircraft approaching the same runway, Mr. Anderson should implement procedural separation based on the last known aircraft positions to resolve the conflict effectively and maintain safe airspace management within the National Airspace System NAS. Procedural separation involves applying predefined separation standards and instructions to ensure safe distances between aircraft until the conflict is resolved or alternative instructions are provided. Option A involves emergency procedures. Option C pertains to weather radar functions. Option D addresses ground operations. Implementing procedural separation supports controllers in mitigating potential conflicts, enhancing airspace safety, and promoting efficient air traffic management at major airports. Question 90. Explain the function of VOR, VHF, and a directional range in air navigation and its importance for air traffic control operations are to provide real-time weather updates and advisories to pilots. B. To facilitate precise aircraft tracking and navigation using radio signals. C. To conduct flight inspections and certify navigation aids. D. To coordinate airport gate assignments and ground operations. Correct answer. B. To facilitate precise aircraft tracking and navigation using radio signals. Explanation. VOR, VHF, and a directional range systems play a crucial role in air navigation by transmitting radio signals that aircraft use to determine their precise position relative to the ground station. Air traffic controllers rely on VOR for accurate aircraft tracking, navigation, and routing within the National Airspace System NAS. Controllers use VOR information to provide clearances, direct flights along preferred routes, and maintain safe separation between aircraft. Option A involves weather advisory services. Option C pertains to navigation aid certification. Option D addresses ground operations management. Understanding VOR capabilities enhances controllers' ability to ensure efficient airspace utilization and safe aircraft operations.